Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Camera Tuesday, we're gonna talk about Sony FX6 cinema camera. So let's dive right into it. So first thing first, we have to understand what exactly we are talking about. We are talking about a full frame cinema camera. Now that is very critical because many dedicated video interchangeable lens camera, they are still kind of stuck in a basically APS-C sensor range for uh, which many times has been called as Super 35. Uh, so reality is still uh, basically uh, APS-C system. This puppy is full frame. That is very significant. Now, video resolution wise, it's a digital camera, so resolution is locked at 4K. It's not like a, you can go 6K or like 5.5K or 8K, it's only for 4K. You can go down, but you can't go up. Now, this is at $6,000. Now, you may find that price to be a bit odd because apparently this price is a kind of good enough where many people can go into professional kind of video camera because Red released a camera that is for this price. Uh, Canon also released C80 series, uh, 70 for this kind of price, and a uh, lot of cameras are coming into exactly this price point so apparently this is the hot zone right now so this in indian currency would be around five to six lakhs uh, rupees so it's a not super cheap but not super expensive also and the main point is it's quick and easy to use it's not a system where you like okay uh you know you have to set up the camera you have to figure this out you have to configure this is very simple you just pick it up and you shoot it's like a, a quick pick up and go kind of scenario now, what are the features like what are the pros what are what are exactly you're getting because you are technically buying just sony a7 s3 so what you are getting one core feature for like a, if you tell a videographer that this is the core feature they will simply say shut up and take my money that is inbuilt electronic variable ND filter. Now you have to understand this very simply. In photography world, we always want a low light performance, well, uh, you know, very clean images and all that. That's not an issue for a video, specifically if you're doing in daytime, specifically outdoors. Reason for that is very simple. Shutter speed cannot go too low. You, If you went into a camera and you went down shutter speed like very low in video, you can do that. You can go like 160th of a second. You can go like a one eight, uh, 800th of a second. If you want to do that, you can do that. It's just that it will look very jaggedy it's like a, because there is no natural motion blur it will look very weird so it will like still frames going rather than a smooth video so fundamentally there is a limit of how low you can make your frame rate while still looking pleasing so fundamentally that caps you out where in photography you can go as low as you want like as long as you have light heck go one two thousandth of a second heck you have flash go one eight thousandth of a second you can't do that on video comfortably so to say another aspect is uh, when you talk about uh, videos uh, the aperture we want to keep it open like you, you want to have large apertures but if you have large aperture and large shutter speed you are stuck with a very low iso now digital sensors does allow to go low iso but they are limited like specifically if you are talking about a scene where like for example you have a camera and you are talking about uh, like following a character that is going from inside to outdoors you are stuck like that's a very difficult scene to shoot so because your exposure will change dramatically so how the heck cinema camera manages that they uses nd filters now nd filters generally like from old and negative eras to modern digital cameras even pro end cameras they utilize giant nd uh, cards basically they put it in front it's not a card it's like, like glass plate now those are expensive af not suitable for uh, beginner work so we use uh, basically polarizers now problem with polarizer is they'll kind of make your scene look wonky specifically if you are using ultra wide you will have a scenario where it's like okay sky in this part is different sky in this part is different the reason because polarization works in different in different angles so this camera bypasses that by using a normal lcd now, like wait a minute what is that so you take this lcd all it is is just a bright light uh, at the back end the color filter in the front and a uh, control system now that control system that filter is what controlling how much light goes through so some sony is like giant semi uh, semiconductor manufacturer they're like what if we put that in front of the sensor benefit of that now you have an electronic system to control it right now there are many cameras that have an inbuilt nd system but many of them like almost all of them they all they have is just like basically plates going by it's like plate number one plate number two plate number three it does work it's awesome it's better than nothing but it's not smooth so you will go from uh, like multiple steps so you will go like let's say four stop below to six stop below to eight stop below you will not go like okay four four point two four point three four point five four you will not have smooth gradation you're just gonna kachong kachong so that's a very awkward kind of scenario where you like you can manage it it's better than nothing but it's not a very smooth video function on this system uh, basically that electronic variable part that is like it allows you smooth control so fundamentally you go from only three things to control shutter aperture and iso to an nd also nd because because it's smooth it's a system that electronically can be controlled so you can literally go from see everything same iso same uh the shutter speed the same everything else can be kept exactly the same and you can just go from uh basically dim loot uh, dimly lit room inside to outdoors 
why your camera is like i got this bro i'm gonna tune down the tone down the basically nd filter so when you go outdoors it does not overexpose everything is awesome so that feature alone i have provided the video down below that feature alone is worth more than enough it's like if you're gonna tell people like this feature is there in this camera they like just shut up and take my money another aspect is it's a camera it's a professional equipment you want to count on it and a7s3 while it's very good and almost uh you know there is no overheating issue but in certain scenarios in certain cases it can overheat specifically if you have a very tiny lens and you're using it broad daylight um, and like the sun is directly on top now it, because it uses uh, basically lens itself as a cooling system so if you have a very plasticky lens and not very big thermal mass in the lens it can overheat and people have gotten to overheat so you don't want that on your professional camera you're like dude this should work 24 into 7 it has inbuilt cooling active cooling basically there is a fan and giant heat sink to take care of that that's awesome bigger battery really necessary if you want to do video all day handle it's it's a thing that we don't think about but it's kind of necessary specifically if you want movement in your system and you want handheld movement you have to have handles and all that jazz and then there is time code now without time code if you try to uh, let's say uh, do internal and external audio professionally uh, people will say uh, are you crazy so fundamentally it's kind of necessary uh, requirement and then you have dc power jack basically you just plug in a dc power uh, like again sony will provide you the battery uh, adapter cradle itself can act as a uh, charging equipment you can just run it continuously without even having a battery sti output which allows you to have external uh, monitoring system on single cable hdmi is like multiple cable inside and it's very expensive specifically if you want to buy a long cable it's ludicrously and it's non-locking so basically if you have let's say you have a setup uh, scene setup and somebody trips on a cable the cable will pull out on SDI because it's a locking connector it will stay there it's like it's much more robust and professional system and you have a lot of dedicated buttons because you don't want to fiddle around with menu when you're talking about something serious uh, time matters you want to like tuk tuk done you don't normally like okay menu number one page number four page number this site setting no uh, tuk tuk done so it has that so for professional many of this is like dude shut up and take my money for many uh, average kind of user or amateur or like people who do low budget kind of scenario it's like dude it's not worth it so if you really want to figure out why it's so expensive, it's because of the electronic system and uh, active cooling system. And there are a lot of bells and whistles that comes along with it for you. Like, yeah, I can understand why it's so expensive, even though the core is exactly from A7S3. Now, what are the cons of this? This is a professional equipment and a lot of good things are there. There must be some bad things. First bad thing is, even though this is directly from Sony A7S3, it does not have IBUS. Now, you may be like, why the heck IBUS was removed if it could be crammed into a, like a tiny mirrorless camera? The reason is flange distance. The sensor and the lens end is very close to each other. So fundamentally, the amount of space they have for traveling uh, the basically sensor equipment is very little. For uh, A7S3, that's used by basically what we call a simple uh, IBUS mechanism. But here, they remove the ibus mechanism and put the nd system so it was like either or or scenario it's not like you can have both now you might be like why the heck they removed ibus isn't ibus more important than nd short answer no simply because if you look at video cameras professional video cameras most of them don't even have any kind of image stabilization and the reason for that is you're supposed to stabilize the camera externally like using a camera dolly like using a camera jig like utilizing a gimbal system all of those things should stabilize your camera not the camera itself and realizing that sony has removed a one crew critical feature they have added one another useful feature that's like uh, the gyro data is captured in the video footage metadata itself so you can stabilize the footage in post processing with reliable accuracy so the ibus was sacrificed over so many people is like dude i want a camera with ibus this is not for you if you like uh, if you like the nd and you can you utilize gimbals uh, jigs and all that jazz you will be happy with this now no mic jack uh, on the body because this camera has slr uh, basically xlr output system so awesome you can plug a microphone which has a high phantom draw this purpose like i got this so that's awesome but problem is that's directly on the handle now handle is a detachable unit from the brain now that's awesome you can strip it down but problem is once you strip it down you lose every single audio equipment so you cannot connect even a 3.5 mm jack right now uh, in current world we have a lot of awesome miniature equipments where you have like for example rode wireless go it connects using 3.5 mm if sony system had like that uh, 3.5 mm on the body itself it would have been easily like you plug it in a gimbal you have that tiny uh, receiver on top it's done game over like it's a gimbal system right now working professionally but uh, what you have to do if you remove the handle you have to have second second separate audios fundamentally that's a very weird thing to remove so and again it's like just 3.5 mm jack don't give like you know uh, like four channel system xlr system just that 3.5 that is like why uh and menu system now sony 
apparently it turns out they do not have a good uh, what we call ui artist or anybody who actually knows what they are doing about like when engineering awesome user interface they don't even know what user interface means it's like everybody uh, who is testing this camera they are like professionals in terms of engineering so they are like oh yeah this menu makes sense oh this makes sense it's like to you are engineer a videographer is not an engineer so fundamentally the menu system is not that good and people were expecting that sony will do something better because a7 s3 was really good so this is not that good and the reason for that is apparently they wanted to make it backwards and forward compatible in terms of user experience when you are going from uh, sony vegas to sony fx9 to this so that's up to you but again it's manageable it's not something like the end of the world you can manage it but it's like really sony like really hire a goddamn ui artist but that has the cons of that now how does it compare to sony a7s3 now to best analogy i can give you so for you to understand this properly is like there are many cars that have same engine but different chassis this is exactly the same you don't have to think too much about it it's just like there is a engine and there is different chassis that's the whole point of it so do not buy this camera expecting like you're going to get multiple awesome performance compared to a7s3 that's not going to happen however you're going to get a lot of usability and pro stability features like not overheating not have to worry about like cable pulling out not having to worry about like you know short battery life all those things are necessary in pro environment like you go to a pro environment and you're going to say oh time code is something that i have to think about no 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 like, time code has to be absolute so fundamentally having those things here is really good so do not buy this expecting like you know gg performance do buy expecting this like it will be easier to use it has some pro features if you don't need them enjoy a7s3 Sony really did a very good job with A7S3 because my god damn it's like it's really really good camera for surprisingly cheap price like people are comparing that camera to red camera that is like 6000 yes red camera does have some benefits it's like but it's like bro you are like twice as price and your benefits are not that wow it does have global shutter so red camera does have that benefit but other than that it's not that good so and does not have redundancy which is like do it's supposed to be used as a crash cam a small camera crash cam uh, should have redundancy so if you are happy with a7s3 you will be happy with a7s3 this camera does not have like whoa if this camera is like if you wanted to buy a professional camera you're like no i want a professional thing this is good for it and another aspect is if you bring this camera to a corporate client they will look at this and like the studio series you bring a tiny mirrorless camera like no matter how much uh, rig you make it does not look professional and you may be like that's just psychology that's absolutely true but again they have to pay your bills so you have to pamper their psychology so this was my presentation on sony a7 app uh, why i'm saying a7 <laughs> basically fx uh, 6 series i hope you liked it learn from it in that case please click the like button share it amongst your friend that will help me a lot if you didn't like it didn't enjoy it i urge you to press this like press it twice to show me extra disappointment please leave a comment because i try to reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching